thank you very much. Uh, we <coughs> we're running out of time. Uh, the minister must catch a plane. The minister was here to present uh, the financial situation uh, of the entire country, which is a decision that we took uh, in the extended cabinet that uh, he must visit so that he can take along some of our colleagues about uh, our financial situation before he tables the adjustment. So he has honored that promise. That was the purpose of uh, our, our visit. Let me allow the minister to briefly speak to you uh, and be mindful of the time. Minister. Thank you, Premier. We are, as the Premier pointed out, this is the, the third of our visits to the different provinces. Uh, the way in which we normally work as we go towards the medium-term budget policy statement next Wednesday is that the President convenes an extended cabinet meeting where we present uh, the economic situation, uh, the, the current fiscal situation, meaning what's revenue doing, what's expenditure doing, how much of money we think we can spend in the next two to three years, uh, what is our debt situation at the moment, uh, and arising from that, in terms of our constitution, we have to propose a what we call division of revenue. Means how does each sphere of government get an equitable share uh, of the revenue? So that's your uh, purpose. The second is uh, this gives us an opportunity to share with our provincial colleagues and executive councils uh, a perspective on on our economy, what's happening in the globe at the moment. It's a very uncertain and uh, a volatile situation out there where uh, US elections or British Brexit or other events can create uh, uncertainty at any particular point in time. And uh, the world is in a low growth environment uh, as well, with one or two exceptions like China and India. And that obviously has implications for our economy as well. Secondly, the African continent also this year is growing slower than it normally does, and that has an impact on our exports to the uh, African economies also. Our own economy, as you know, is uh, definitely not going into recession, but is not doing extremely well. And so we require provincial leaders, local government leaders, and national leaders to work together to see how do we improve the growth prospects of our economy how do we make it more uh, inclusive, create better jobs, and give young people opportunities, particularly uh, for training, for work exposure, and so on. But above all, also create confidence in our economy so that people will want to come and invest here, both as local South African investors uh, and otherwise as well. We also looked at the prospects of the ratings agencies, uh, what sort of uh, issues they will be looking at, and gave the Premier and his team an idea of the work that we're doing uh, with uh, uh, business people and trade unions uh, and uh, the various small business fund project, the youth exposure project, and of course working on the ratings issue as, as well. So we want to thank the Premier for his hospitality. Uh, at least now we have a broader understanding of some of the challenges, but also some of the good things that are happening in South Africa as well. So going to provinces has also taught us uh, good practices. How do they, some provinces are creating good reserve, cash reserves. Others are managing their accruals very well. And, but it also teaches us about some of the pressures in the education system, in the health system, uh, which we have to go and, and give more attention to as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And I'm sure they are thinking, the, these media people, that uh, how is Mumalanga's uh, finances, uh, in your view, what, what is our situation, Minister? Because they must not ask me 
No, like like all provinces, I think uh, Langa is a is a well-run uh, province. It's got uh, areas that obviously it must give attention to. For example, uh, although this is partly a, a national issue, all these trucks that carry coal between coal mines and power plants uh, create a particular uh, challenge on on the roads of, of this part of the province. Uh, this this uh, province has huge economic potential, particularly uh, for tourism. So there's a lot of uh, excellent work uh, that is happening in that area as well. But what is most commendable is uh, the pre Premier's proactive approach, which says uh, we are in a challenging economic environment. This means that there aren't an abundance of fiscal resources available. We must live within our means. We must undertake as many savings as we can and uh, don't put unnecessary pressure uh, on the national fiscus. So I owe him one. He's not going to demand more money from me. So. <laughs> uh, money that we don't have. Money that we don't have. You don't have the money. So <coughs> all of us must live according to our sizes, uh, cut a bit of uh, our dresses and our trousers according to our size. Uh, eat less <laughs> if possible because we don't have money. You can't go to the bank and borrow money to go and buy a, a pack of melimel because that money goes into your mouth. <laughs> uh, tomorrow you can't show that pack of melimel, you can't show the money. So that money went into consumption. Uh, colleagues, thank you very much. Um, we should allow uh, the minister to leave, but uh, with his generosity, two questions will be brilliant. Okay, we should we'll see by the show of hands two questions only. Please, your names and the media houses reply. Okay, this is one and this is two. Thank you, uh, uh, Tom, Tom Kose from Zawaki. Minister, you have been honorable for, throughout the country or in other provinces as well. What, which provinces would you say are candidates for Section 100? And then uh, at this take over by national government. And then... Uh, no, I remember. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And then uh, uh, finally, uh, uh, what we read from the media out there is that South Africa is like borrowing now. We are borrowing even to employ people. Is that a true fact? Where are we as a country? Thank you. Section 100, <laughs> uh, we, we've done, we haven't done a comprehensive uh, uh, situation, but no, no, no province is in the, in the kind of crisis that one or two were in in earlier years at this point in time. So really there's no Section 100 on, on, the, on the card. We'd rather sit like this and say to the Premier, we think you've got these five things to attend to, attend to them, and uh, work with them to actually get it right. On, on the borrowing uh, question, every, virtually every country borrows, but not, not all of them. Uh, and the National Treasury has a very proud record uh, on behalf of government to manage our borrowing in a way in which we don't uh, overstretch ourselves. So today, yes, we owe two trillion rands, uh, but in ratio terms, despite the fact that we're not growing uh, very fast, uh, we're still below the 50% mark. Uh, but uh, our key focus needs to be on growing our economy in an inclusive way, because once you grow the economy, your denominator changes. If your denominator changes, that ratio of 50% uh, becomes lower as well. So uh, growth, uh, inclusive growth is the magical formula, if you like, <laughs> that we all need to find. And we can assure South Africans that we will manage our borrowing in a way in which it, it fits in with the overall sustainable, what we call, fiscal framework, that we're not going to bust the bank and then hopefully not allow anybody to do that as well as a government. It's not just the Treasury's job. This is the government's job at the end of the day. And as the Premier was saying, live within our means. So if you don't have money to do something that you want to do today, 
and postpone it for the day after tomorrow until you have the money. But then and create the environment where you'll have the money, which is grow the economy and create confidence in your economy. Maybe another message, uh, Minister, is that uh, our people must also <coughs> pay for the services that they are supposed to pay. For instance, water. If you're working, you must pay for the water, you must pay for the electricity so that uh, uh, all of us are taking responsibility for the health uh, status of our, of our country. Everyone must be responsible. Which is not an, uh, it's a very important point. Most people will talk about, can you spend more money on X and Y and Z, but they don't ask, where is the money going to come from? And I think contributing to uh, local government taxes or provincial uh, fees that you have to collect or taxes in the country as a whole is what will give us ultimately a sustainable situation. So we need to, and I agree with the Premier entirely, we need to change the culture of payment. We must take responsibility for our own country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister.